In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the light bear faction in the AFK journey. I explained about Wilder faction in my previous video, so if you want to know about the faction, you can check on my channel and watch that video. So just like my previous video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about light bearer heroes. Like what they are good at, the pros and cons, and everything. So let's check it out! So the light bearers are heroes who serve in the name of Gura. They mainly fight with Hypogenes, Molars, and Graveborns. Their main goal is to restore the land of Asperia from evil. So first, let's talk about Walker. Walker is a single target damage dealer with some disruptive crowd control potential in his stun. He excels at taking the high priority target and providing some opening bursts with his exclusive skill. The plus point of him is he has a skill called Bounty Pursue that allows him to focus his damage on a high priority enemy, increasing his effectiveness against key threats. When under the right condition, both his ultimate and basic attacks can over stuns. He is also somewhat effective against tankier enemies because a portion of his damage scales with the target's max HP or lost HP. His exclusive skill also provides an opening burst of AoE damage and stuns. But the downside of him is his stuns, target damage, and opening AoE are still tied to cooldowns. His basic attack stun also relies on landing critical hits, and while he can prioritize a target, the majority of his damage is single target focus. And although his enhanced force can offer a shield under specific circumstances, Walker doesn't have inherent tankiness. Moving on to the next hero is Tamesia. She's a disruptive tank who excels at charging through enemy lines, knocking down opponents and dealing chaos. She demands skillful execution of her charge mechanic and needs some team support to optimize her potential. The plus point of her is she's a disruptive charger so she excels at diving into the enemy backline, knocking down enemies, and causing general disruption. She can also use her skill frequently and thanks to her energy restoration on each charge and her ultimate being energy free. She has a good scaling potential because her charge damage increases with her own attack speed and haste. Tamesia can inflict attack reduction with Iron Heal and some defense threat with her passive. And she also has control immunity once her explosive skills is triggered. But the downside of her is she has unique playstyles. So mastering Tamesia's charge mechanic requires practice, and her effectiveness can depend on positioning and timing. She also loves a basic attack which means she needs to rely on her skills for energy gain and damage. Before she gets immunity with her explosive skill, crowd control effects can heavily hinder her ability to function. And while she can apply debuffs, her own damage output is not extremely high compared to dedicated damage dealers. The next hero is Corrin. She's a disruptive warrior with good mobility and the potential for significant burst damage with critical hits. He excels in interpreting enemy formations and providing some focus protection for a vulnerable ally. The plus point of him is he offers decent crowd control with his ultimates immobilize, knockback potential, and target dash to disrupt enemies with all-round tactic. He can improve his ally's ability to survive incoming damage by providing a shield to himself and his weakest allies. Karin's kit includes true damage elements that will give him some ability to deal with high defense targets. He has good mobility with both his ultimate and his ability to jump to the weakest ally. But the downside of him is a significant portion of Karin's disruption and shielding is tied to the cooldowns of his skills. Also, some of his effectiveness relies on positioning, both for knocking enemies back with his ultimate and for protecting the right ally with Auron tactic. His damage might be underwhelming if he doesn't land critical hits, and while he has a shoot ability, Karin isn't inherently tanky and can be vulnerable without proper support. Next hero is Vala. Fala is the first attack hero with potent single target focus and the ability to change roles depending on situation. She requires careful timing on her mode switching and protection in melee combat to maximize her burst and disruptive potential. The plus point of her is she's flexible to different situations because she can switch between a ranged attacker and a melee assassin. She also possesses both stuns and haste reduction. 
She's strong at finishing targets because her sword mode gains extra damage against low health enemies. Her exclusive skill can offer temporary invulnerability and a movement speed boost for repositioning. But the downside of her is Phallus effectiveness varies depending on whether she's in the optimal mode for the situation. So incorrect switching can hinder her. She also lacks inherent tankiness and can be vulnerable if caught in the wrong form at the wrong time. And while her damage output can be high, some of it depends on specific enemy health percentage. The next hero is Lucius. Lucius is a classic shielding superhero focused on protecting his team from damage and providing healing. He excels in compositions where his allies can benefit from the extra survivability his shields provide. The plus point of him is he can boost his team's survivability by providing a significant damage mitigation for his team. One of his skills offers reliable healing for his team especially when his shield is active. His exclusive skill adds a bit of area damage and an attack reduction debuff to his kit. And one of his skills can knock an enemy back and potentially disrupt their positioning. The downside of him is a large portion of his protection is tied to his ultimate's availability, leaving him more exposed during its cooldown and Lucius doesn't bring a significant damage output to a team. Next hero is Marley. Marley is a ranger focused on dealing high single target damage and providing some disruption through stuns. She excels in situations where she can be isolated from the enemy frontline and capitalize on her conditional damage buffs. The plus point of her ultimate gives her some tactical flexibility by allowing her to reposition herself. One of her skills, over friendly consistent stuns with every third basic attack. Hyperfocus gives her a significant boost to both damage and attack speed when she's isolated from enemies. Her hero focus emphasizes critical damage, amplifying her damage potential. And her exclusive skill allows her to deal true damage, which helps bypass high defense targets. But the downside of her is Marley lacks innate defensive abilities and can be vulnerable if caught out of positions or focused by the enemy team and her stuns and repositioning are tied to skill cooldowns, leaving her less disruptive in between those use. Next hero is Cassidy. Cassidy is primarily supportive mage who excels at empowering a single ally with additional damage and some crowd control tools. Her impact relies on carefully selecting the ideal target to receive her buffs and having a team composition that capitalizes on their empowered basic attacks. The plus point of her is Cassidy provides the significant additional damage for a specific ally through title strength with her explosive skill. She also provides AoE damage and effect capabilities. Cassidy works exceptionally well with heroes who have strong basic attacks, significantly amplifying their damage output. But the downside of her is Cassidy's effectiveness relies heavily on boosting a specific ally. If that ally falls early, she loses a lot of value. While she empowers others, her own direct damage output is not extremely high. The last hero is Rowan. Rowan is an iconic support hero focused on energy generation and providing sustain for his team. He shines in compositions that rely on frequent ultimate usage and benefit from the extra healing his potions offer. The plus point of him is Rowan's primary strength is providing significant energy boost for his team with his ultimate Fatal Greed and occasionally with Smart Stall. His health potions from Smart Stall provide powerful team healing, especially for heroes below 50% HP. Rowan offers minor disruption with Ace Dance in the form of Energy Drain and later a potential AoE buff with his exclusive skill, his energy generation, healing and damage skills somewhat with his own stats and skill upgrades. And he also an easy to use hero. But the downside of him is a lot of Roma's impact comes from his ultimate and potion availability, making him somewhat less effective when those are on a cooldown. Rowan doesn't deal significant damage himself. He relies on his team to capitalize on the energy and healing he provides. And Rowan himself is somewhat fragile. He needs protection on the battlefield to reach his full potential. So the conclusion is life bearer heroes are only strong on early till mid game, but for the late game they are pretty basic.
The heroes that is worth to get is Rowan and Gala, but the rest of them is an easy skip. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next video. Bye!